It was a bit of a passion project to begin with. I've known Lydia since I was a little girl and um, really knew that uh, her story leading into the 2014 Olympics could be feature length worthy and took that risk um, of, well, both of us took that risk of of following her journey. Um, you know, the film is all about her doing this acrobatic trick, which is the most um, dangerous and complex acrobatic maneuver of any acrobatic sport. And doing it as a mother, um, leading into 2014, um, we're kind of lucky she pulled it off at the Olympics, because if she didn't, we wouldn't have had a film. <laughs> and there was definitely a lot invested between Leo and myself and our film investors and three years of spending our life dedicating um, to following her and and you know raising all the funding so when um, she pulled it off in in Russia um, I called Leo from Australia and I'm like we have a film we have a film we have so, an ending to yeah our we film. have an ending it's one of the first feature-length sport documentaries from Australia which is quite amazing and it's even more significant that it's on female achievements and um, being a sport film, um, we didn't want it to be just about you know highlights of um, you know like the greatest hits reel of just eye candy and sport, pure sport. The sport is really a vehicle for telling the story, but it, we have structured this like a, a classic, um, classically a classic narrative structure of the hero's journey. So a lot of women who watch the film really respond to at that typical role reversal of um, you know. A, a, the, the wife character supporting the husband in his career goals, but this is the husband supporting the wife with her dreams and her pursuits, wholeheartedly supporting that. And a lot of people find that extremely uplifting and refreshing. Yeah, there's actually been a few women that have gone to the film and then they've gone back to the film and brought their husbands. <laughs> Which is good for us. Yeah, just, you know, check out what he does, you know. <laughs> The actual shooting that we did, which was predominantly in Finland and China, um, it was tricky because we were a very lean team. It was just the two of us and a sound recordist, and we had all of our kit was just in two backpacks, so we, would, so we could hike in. And we actually shot on really great high-end DSLR cameras on a Nikon D800, um, and uh, I did most of the photography. Um, the thing that was tricky was that it was extremely cold. So, I mean, there was a couple of days we were shooting, it was getting close to minus 30, maybe minus 25 or something. I mean, the hard thing with um, making an Olympic, well, a story about an Olympian is, is the archives. Like, they're not cheap. And so we spent a lot of time financing the film because, you know, she goes to four Olympic games. So to cover that, it's just, you know, the budget just goes up and up and up and it's like, God, your heart palpitations when yeah. we were timing our edit, knowing how much this was going to cost. If you lived in Whistler, what job would you want to do? I don't know, I guess it'd have something to do with the film festival here. It's, it's a fantastic. I'd be working a lab or something for the film festival. Yeah, I love it. You're at the top of the Whistler Mountain and the gondola is closed. What are you going to do to get down the mountain? I used to be a gymnast. I'll probably, I'll get the lift, but I'll hang from the lift. So I won't sit on the lift, I'll hang from it and yeah, just to be different.